Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to explore the LC circuit a little bit more. In this case we're going to find the current in an LC circuit as a function of both time and as a function of charge on the capacitor. So let's start with the f as a function of time. On the previous example I showed that the, um, let's see here, that the charge on the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the total charge placed on the capacitor which we'll call Q sub naught times the cosine of omega t uh, plus a phase angle. We can put in the phase angle if we like. There we go. Now omega here in this case, omega, was equal to 1 over the square root of L times C. Now in our particular example here, if C is 8 microfarads and L is 0.5 henrys, if we plug those numbers in here, this is equal to 1 over the square root of 0.5 henrys times 8 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, henrys, and uh, that was equal to, uh, let's see, what was that equal to? Uh, we got 0.5 times 8 e to 6 minus equals, take the square root of that, uh, that was equal to 1 over uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 3, which is equal to 500 radians per second. That's the oscillation frequency in radians per second. And so if we plug that into our equation here, we have Q as a function of time is equal to the initial charge times the cosine of 500 radians per second times time plus the phase angle. And then all we have to do here is just plug in whatever we want for time and we'll configure out what the charge is on the capacitor as a function of time here. Now let's say as an example um, Q when T is equal to zero is equal to what? Well let's say that's Q initial times the cosine of uh, 500 times the time is zero plus the phase angle, and let's say that the phase angle is equal to zero for this example, then at that point the cosine of zero is one, and so that would simply be equal to Q of time equals zero is equal to initial charge. So here we can say if the phase angle is zero and we start at T equals zero, then the charge on the capacitor would be the maximum charge with first place on it, and then the charge would dissipate as current begins to flow the circuit back and forth. So in this particular problem, now we want to find out what the current is as a function of time. So we know that I, by definition, is equal to dQ dt. So it's equal to the dt of the charge, and the charge in this case was Q initial times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle, like so. So what is the derivative of the cosine? Well, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, the derivative of the cosine is a negative sine, so the current I as a function of time is equal to uh, Q sub naught times minus sine of omega t plus the phase angle times the derivative of the angle, which would be omega, and so we could say that the function I, the current I as a function of time is equal to minus omega Q sub naught times the sine of omega t plus phi. And so this will allow you to find the current at any time as a function of time. So what would the current be at t equals zero? Well again if the phase angle is zero, and we take that away, if time is equal to zero, the sine of zero is zero, so at that moment there would be no current flow at all. So when when the capacitor is fully full, filled with charge, there's no current flowing at all, and then after that current begins to flow and begins to increase as the sine function would dictate. Now we can also find the current as a function of energy, just like we can find the position of an oscillating spring as a function of um, its position away from the equilibrium point. So what we can do there is that the energy total is equal to energy initial or the energy on the inductor plus the energy on the capacitor at any point in its oscillation. So what is the total energy on the capacitor? Well, if the capacitor is completely filled with charge, the energy would be one half char charge squared divided by the total capacitance is equal to, what is the energy on an inductor? The energy on an inductor is one half Li squared, and the energy on a capacitor at any point in time would be plus one half Q 
uh, squared over C. Now, what I've, what I've done here is, of course, this is the total charge on the capacitor initially when we first fill up the capacitor with charge before we let it go back and forth. That's the charge. This will be the charge as a function of time. So Q is a function of time and I is a function of time. If I now solve this equation for I, what do we get? Well, first of all, I want to get rid of all the one-halves. And then I want to move this over here and turn the equation around so I get L I squared as a function of time is equal to Q squared over C minus little Q squared, that's a function of time, over C. The next thing I can do is uh, divide both sides by L. Okay, so we have I squared is equal to uh, Q squared over CL minus Q squared over CL. Then I can, since that's over the same denominator, I can write this as I squared is equal to um, Q squared minus little Q squared over C times L or L times C. And if I now take the square root of both sides, I get I is equal to plus or minus, because it could be either one, uh, Q squared minus little Q squared over the square root of CL or LC. LC is a more common way of writing that. And of course, 1 over the square root of LC is equal to omega. And so from there, so we can say that I is equal to plus or minus omega times Q squared minus Q squared like that. So now you can see that as a function of charge on capacitor Q, I can find out what I is equal to. So even though Q and I are a function of time, if we don't know what the time is, we can always find the current on the circuit as a function of the charge that's currently on the capacitor. So if there's zero charge on the capacitor, then you have maximum current. If the charge on the capacitor is equal to the total charge on, that we started with, then the current is zero. And here we can define current as a function of time on the circuit. And that's how you find current, either as a function of time or as a function of charge on the capacitor.